What's up guys, this is P Sensei. In today's video, we're going to continue our series called Tier Review. If you didn't know, um, I started a new series called Tier Review, where we basically review a um, tier list by different YouTubers and pro players about Solo Showdown. Last episode, we reviewed Money Capital's tier list, and today's episode, we're going to be reviewing Kairos Times tier list. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's just hop right into the introduction. Fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Simon. It is time to brawl, and it's also time for version 20 of the Brawl Stars tier list. And in celebration of reaching our 20th version of the tier list, this video is going to have more puns in it than usual, so let's see if you can keep count. This video is going to cover all the changes since the last tier list to help you get as many wins as possible. And since the last tier list, there have been two rounds of balance changes, the release of two new brawlers, and a lot of things have changed since the last meta. Now all right, so that was the introduction uh, for Kairos Times tier list. If you didn't know how his tier lists work, um, basically uh, he has four tiers. He has the S tier, the A tier, um, the B tier, and then the non-ranked tier or the F tier. And of course, in the S tier, you're going to have the top brawlers and then an A tier, brawlers that are worse than S tier but are still good. And then the B tier, brawlers that are worse than A tier but still good. Um, and then... Uh, all the other brawlers uh, that are, aren't really that good in the mode will be in the non-ranked tier. And also, in, in addition, in the S tier, um, the best brawler in the S tier will be given the golden S tier rank, which basically means that they are the best brawler in that given mode. Also, in his video, he only talks about the changes between the last tier list, and then at the end, he will show um, a picture with the overall tier list for that given mode. Anyway... Let's just hop right into the solo showdown part of the tier list. Next is going to be solo showdown, and then we'll cover duo showdown. Penny's going down from the B tier into the non-ranked tier for solo showdown. Without immediate value from her super, because it takes a little bit of time to actually land a hit after it lands. And of course, a few opportunities for her main attack to benefit from enemies clumping up. Penny's ship has sailed. All right, and as far as Penny going into the non-ranked tier, definitely you're this. Penny is just not a very good brawler in solo showdown. The main reason um, for this is just because Penny's survivability is just extremely low. Penny just doesn't do a lot of damage, and that allows um, that makes it so that she can get rushed very easily. And her super doesn't real doesn't really do anything. If you do have a gadget, it can save you in some situations, but um, it's really not going to help you in a pinch. So definitely you're this one. Let's head into the next one going down from the B tier into the non-ranked tier. Not even Bruce can carry Nita's unbearably poor utility in Solo Showdown. Now as far as Nita going from the B tier into the non-ranked tier, um, I would have to see the overall tier list, because um, Nita can be pretty solid in Solo Showdown on the right map. Now obviously in this Showdown meta, um, they got rid of all the close range maps and they replaced them with more longer range maps, so that definitely is not going to help Nita. But still, I feel like uh, Nita is still pretty solid. So I'd have to see what other brawlers are in the B tier before I say Nita um, deserves to be non-ranked. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my opinion for now. Anyway, let's head into the next one. Non-ranked up into the B tier. When equipped with his sticky syrup mixer gadget, Farley is self-sufficient enough to attempt a bartending in No Man's Land. Oof, now I definitely disagree with this pick. Um, and I think I know why they put Barley um, in the B tier. And that's because his overall win rate, if you actually look at his overall win rate, it's pretty decent. Uh, but they didn't actually look at the reason why his overall win rate is so uh, good. And the reason why his overall win rate is so good is because of his win rate in Cavern Churn, bringing up his average win rate overall to be pretty high. And uh, he, he has, I believe, a 63% win rate in Cavern Churn. Um, it's the only map that Barley is viable in, and he's pretty good in it. But if you take a look at the other maps that are in the game, he's just not good. I believe the highest win rate that Barley has, if you take away Cavern Churn, is uh, 45 or 46%, something around that, which is not very good. Um, but yeah, because of Cavern Churn, um, ha him having a 63% win rate, that's going to bring his average win rate way up. And that's why um, he's probably in the B tier. But yeah, I don't think Barley belongs in the B tier because he only has one map. Anyway, let's head into the next brawler. From the non-ranked tier up into the B tier. Rico is able to flee danger quickly with Robo Retreat, and he has enough range damage to make him a viable threat. Not now, I also disagree with this pick, and oddly enough, for the same exact reason. Um, Rico is only viable in Cavern Churn. I believe he has a 57% win rate in Cavern Churn. T take away Cavern Churn, his highest win rate is 45%. Not very good. His only viable map is Cavern Churn. That's going to bring his win rate up. Um, I did push Rico to 1,000 trophies, and in that video, I mentioned that his only good map is Cavern Churn. Don't even think about playing Rico anywhere else. 
because he's just not going to be good. And for me personally, that doesn't warrant him being in the B tier if you're only good on one map. Anyway, let's head into the next brawler. Being added into the A tier, while Nani's main attack is exceptionally great for melee conflict, it's Peep that really distinguishes Nani as an A tier brawler, as it provides inescapable damage from across the map, teleportation, and the ability to scout from a distance if really needed. Now I highly agree with this one, definitely think Nani belongs in the A tier, Nani definitely a very strong brawler in Soul Shadow, however not strong enough to be in the S tier, so I definitely agree with this one. However, I disagree with the reasoning. Um, the reason why Nani is A tier is for two things, one, um, her range, and two, her damage, okay? Nani practically does a 3k shot every shot, um, so it's basically like a B but worse. Um, but the only difference is that it is a lot harder to hit Nani's shots than it is to hit a B shot. So there is that, but still, if you can hit your Nani shots, Nani can be even more annoying than a B. And while her super definitely is useful, it is only useful if you A, have her second star power, and B, have her gadget that allows you to teleport. And also her second star power, which gives you an 80% shield while you use it. It can be very great um, to, to um, use in, in tough situations when you're taking a lot of damage. Anyway, let's head into the next brawler. Into the A tier. While still a strong option, BB speed isn't enough to justify S tier status in the face of ranged brawlers. All right, as far as BB being moved into the A tier, definitely agree with this one. Uh, due to the nerfs that BB has gotten, and also due to there being less tank maps in the meta, as well as brawlers like Surge, which can um, completely counter tanks very well, BB is just not doing so hot right now. Um, while she's still good. Um, there are still a lot of maps where BB has a pretty good win rate on. She did not take the hit as much as other tanks did. So BB is still pretty strong. That's why I think A tier is a perfect fit for her. Anyway, let's move into Gale the next brawler. From the B tier into the A tier. Gale's buff to his projectile mechanics was devastatingly strong, providing him with consistent DPS. Now, I definitely agree with Gale being in the A tier. Ever since he's got his buff, he has been pretty solid in Soul Showdown. However, he is not as broken in Soul Showdown as he is in other game modes. And so I definitely think the A tier is a perfect fit for him. Um, that increased damage um, helps him compete a lot and, uh, and win a lot more 1v1s in Soul Showdown than he did before. So I definitely agree Surge, with this one. Starting out into the S tier and replacing Pam as the golden S tier brawler, the best brawler for Solo Showdown. Surge has landed in the superhero tier again. Assuming that he survives through the end of the match, he's going to naturally be able to power up in ways that other brawlers don't, meaning that he's going to be basically unstoppable, especially if he's gotten a few kills and picked up some cubes. And here Now I definitely disagree with this pick and for many reasons. Um well I'm not saying Surge is weak in Soul Showdown, Surge is definitely strong. He's definitely not the best brawler in Soul Showdown. And I know Surge, you know, it's completely broken in every other mode. Right, and I know these pro players um, that see this, they just want to put Surge number one in every single mode. But the simple reality is Surge, um, while he's super strong in Soul Showdown, definitely is not stronger than Pam and 8-Bit. Um, believe it or not, um, since the last time we actually took a look at the win rates in my last tier list video, Surge's win rate has dropped down uh, to 8th place, believe it or not. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, his usage rate, even though Pam and 8-Bit both have higher usage rates. And higher win rates, but I think that a lot of that has to do with teaming. But I think the main reason why I don't agree with this is just because Surge is only overpowered when he gets to his third and fourth stages. If Surge can't get to those um, third and fourth stages, when he's in his first and second stages, he really isn't that overpowered and is a lot easier to deal with. Now, Surge does have his teleport. He does have um, uh, his star power, which can help him peak shoot. Um, so those definitely help him, but... Um, on those really open maps with that don't have a lot of walls, um, it can be pretty hard for Surge as a slow brawler with a short range to actually get his super when you're facing against longer range targets such as Nannies, Bees, Apits, and Pams that are going to be smart enough to not let you attack them, right? Obviously, on maps with more walls, um, you're going to be facing a more close range brawlers and you can outplay them when you have a wall. But on those super open maps, I'm talking about maps with the Meteor modifier that can really open up the map. Um, it can actually be pretty difficult for Surge to get a super um, if the opponents are high, all high level and play the game smartly. Um, and so because of that, um, I definitely think Surge is definitely strong. Like I said, when Surge gets to those third and fourth stages, he is overpowered. Don't get me wrong. But if he doesn't have a great way to get to those stages, then Surge can be um, less viable and a lot more easier to deal with. 
And so that's why I definitely think Surge deserves to be an S tier, but does not deserve the golden S tier brawler for being the best brawler in Solo Showdown. But anyways, uh, let's just go ahead and look at the overall tier list. I'll give you my thoughts on uh, the brawlers that are in there, and then we can go ahead and take a look at the win rates to see how well it stacks up. All right, and here you can see the overall tier list. In the S tier, we have Surge with the golden S tier. Then we have Carl, Pam, and 8-Bit. In the A tier, we have Max, B, Bo, Jackie, Daryl, Gene, Crow, Brock, Nanny, BB, and Gale. And finally, in the B tier, we have Spike, Frank, Shelly, Poco, Sprout, um, Primo, Leon, Mr. P, Terra, Ems, Bull, Rosa, Sandy, Mortis, another Sprout, uh, error there, uh, Rico, and finally, Barley. Now, as far as the S tier, definitely agree with this one, except for Surge being the Golden S tier. I definitely think it belongs to 8-Bit. I mean, you can just look at the win right there. Um, <laughs> um, you could make the argument that B could be in the S tier, but um, pr pretty good S tier. For the A tier, um, definitely think, I don't know, uh, Brock and Crow, kind of feeling iffy about those. Um... I mean, they definitely, I guess they could barely make it into the A tier, but just barely. Um, as far as Bo, um, I, I don't really know about Bo either. And the reason why is because Bo, the, re the reason why his win rate is so high is because of Cavern Churn. Without Cavern Churn, he'd be a pretty average brawler. So I definitely think without Cavern Churn, Bo is B tier. So I def don't know about Bo. Um, looking into the B tier, um, we have quite a bit that I'm kind of feeling a bit iffy on. Um, yeah, definitely... Of uh, Sprout, and obviously, I already say my opinion on uh, Rico and Barley, but Sprout as well. Sprout is only good on Cavern Shorten, just like Barley is. Um, not really good anywhere else. M's don't really agree with M's. I think Nita is better than M's, uh, to be to be fair. I mean, M's was pretty good, to be fair, uh, but um, after that nerf, M's just, is just not good. Um, Mr. P, I guess Mr. P is pretty pretty uh pretty powerful right now, and especially since the maps are pretty open, I guess Mr. P works. Uh, the only problem with Mr. P is he's very weak to assassin type brawlers, so the Mortises, uh or I mean Jackie or BB, he's very weak because he just does not do a lot of damage. So uh, but I guess in, in the open maps, I guess Mr. P could do pretty well. Terra, uh, Terra did get that buff, so I'm pretty fine with Terra. Mortis, um, Mortis does have some maps where you, he can work, particularly the energy drink map, but overall Mortis is just not that good in Soul Shadow. So I don't know, a lot of iffy things on the B tier side, but overall uh, it's a pretty good tier list. Let's go ahead and look at the win rates and then I'll give my rating to see how good this tier list is. Alright, taking a look at the top 10 win rates here. And again, win rates are not everything. There's different things that can affect it um, that don't involve with the actual brawler itself, but they are a pretty good indicator of how good a brawler is. So anyways, um, at number one, we have 8-Bit, then Pam, then Carl, then B, then BB, then Max, then Jackie, then Surge, as I said, in the eighth place, and then we have Daryl and Gene. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I think every brawler in this top 10 is either in the S tier or B tier, so good job on the tier list for that. Um, as you can see, Surge is a bit lower, but his win rate is a bit higher, so I definitely still think Surge is S tier. Uh, but that win, the increase in win rate definitely brought his uh, win increase in usage rate definitely brought his win rate down. And if you look at the other brawlers, their win rates are uh, pretty low in comparison. Um, so yeah, as far as the 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 rating of the tier list, um, I would have to give it an eight out of ten. And the reason why is uh, well, first of all, putting giving Surge the golden S tier was a pretty big mistake in my opinion. Um, and there was just some things I didn't really agree with, such as Nita being off when you have M's on there, uh, the throwers, Barley, Sprout, and then, of course, Rico. Uh, definitely was feeling, feeling a bit iffy about um, Bo and Crow and Brock being in the A tier. I think, I think, I think they're B tier, um, in my opinion. But overall, it was a pretty solid um, tier list, which is why I give it an 8 out of 10. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Um, if you guys like this kind of video, uh, please give me a like and let me know in the comments. Um, if if you have a creator that you want me to review their tier list on, feel free to let um, put down their name in the comments, and I'll check them out and uh, review them. Um, if you want to see more showdown content, um, for more tier lists to um, 1K tips and tricks to just casual showdown gameplay, we have all that, all that on our channel. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and peace.